It is outdoor gear review time. Thank you everybody for tuning in. Today I have a review of the Canway camping stove. Now this is one of those stoves that kind of stack together. There are plenty of stoves like this. This is a gasifier stove and this one was sent in by a viewer who wanted me to review it and my friend I am happy to because I love little stoves like this. I really do. The engineering that goes into stoves like this I find very interesting. So when he sent me this stove, I was happy to check it out. Now this is a Chinese company that produces tons and tons of products. This stove here, you could find the same design with plenty of other companies. So for the most part, if you see this one from another company, don't worry. It's basically the same thing. But this one here is from Canway. Now it should be mentioned that Canway oftentimes changes their design but doesn't update the pictures on their Amazon listing. So sometimes it will look one way, sometimes it will look a different way. You just never really know what you're going to get. I have a link to this stove. It is not an affiliate link. I do not get any money for this review. I don't care if you buy it or not. I'm simply showing it off. But be warned, the link down below that you will find could possibly be to a different product in the future. And that is because of the way that Canway alters their Amazon listing. Now with that being said, let's go over all of the components real quick. If you go out to purchase this stove, this is what you are going to get. You get the mesh bag, which weighs 0.6 ounces, and you're going to get the stove, which weighs one pound, eight ounces. As you can see here, there are multiple components. Now, when it comes to the setup for this stove, it's pretty self-explanatory, and that's impressive because sometimes these stoves can be confusing. It goes together just like that. This is the top part here with the legs. You can keep them folded in for a small cup. Maybe you're making some coffee. Or if you're going to have a larger pot like this, you can fold those legs out. As you can see here, this one side is cut out and that's so you can feed the fire. If you are using a smaller pot, you can actually feed the fire all the way around. You do have some wind holes here, air holes. This is the burner plate. This drops right in to the bottom and this is where all of the wood and ash goes. Now, of course, there are holes in that, so the ash can fall through. It can start a fire on the ground, so be careful. Now, as mentioned before, this is a gasifier stove, secondary combustion, all that good stuff. So you have air holes in the bottom of this. This sits right on top of it. The air comes up, secondary combustion takes place, all of which is pretty simple. To get this stove up and running, it is fairly simple. You take your materials, you put them on the inside. If your materials are super dry, you can use your lighter, start it from the top, let it burn its way down. If they're somewhat wet, you can use a cotton ball, Vaseline, solid fuel, whatever you want. As you're getting it going, you don't wanna stuff it too tightly. You want air to be able to circulate inside of this and catch everything on fire. So take the lighter. Get it going. Basically, it will start by burning its way down. There is no real way to light this from the bottom. You could hold it from the bottom and light but this thing gets very, very hot, very, very quick. Already, it is producing a ton of heat. Now, when it comes to gasifier stoves, wood stoves, these are not light and go stoves. You have to get the stove really going, getting the gasification process going. It takes a little bit of time. Once the stove is underway, you can take your pot support and put it on top. It will smoke in the beginning. That is customary with this stove. And essentially what that is, is that it's getting your materials to the point of combustion. Once it starts burning cleanly, there will be no smoke. Okay, so we have 16 ounces of water going on to boil right now. As you can see there, this is a 750 milliliter pot. It fits just fine on those support stands. You can angle them up and even fold them in if you need to. As you can see, it's very solid. You don't have to worry about this thing falling over or anything like that. When you need to feed the stove, nice and easy because of this port here. As I mentioned before, if the pot is small enough, you can feed from the top. There is plenty of clearance here to feed it. You don't have to worry about knocking anything over or getting burned. 
Of course, you need to angle the port here in the right position. So if the wind's blowing this way, the fire's not coming out this way and burns your fingers when you're feeding it. As it gets nice and hot, you could put in larger pieces of wood. Now, when it comes to this little stove, the price of this thing is not bad at all. Believe it or not, this thing costs 20 bucks. That's pretty impressive for a stove that works this well. 20 bucks at the time of filming gets you an awesome gasifier stove. Yes, it is a little bit heavy, and that really is the biggest negative to this setup. It's over one pound. You will definitely notice this inside of your backpack. It should be mentioned that this has one of the longest listing titles on Amazon of all time. Let me read this to you all. This is the Canway Camping Stove, Wood Stove, Backpacking Stove, Portable Stainless Steel, Wood Burning Stove, Nylon Carry Bag, Outdoor Backpacking, Hiking, Traveling, Picnic, Barbecue. <laughs> I like that, that's really funny. They threw in every keyword they possibly could. This is made from stainless steel and the quality is excellent, especially for 20 bucks. You would expect for $20 that there would be some flaws, right? Some rough edges, but no, the version that I have here that was sent to me is in excellent condition. All the way around, the construction is fantastic. It's well thought out. This is a very efficient stove, as long as the wind is not playing too much of a havoc with it. As you can see, it is a windy day today, so the fire's this way, it's that way. You would definitely want a windscreen if speed is important to you. Because of the gasification process and the way that this is made, the flame does a good job of going right up through the center here. So the distribution is very good. It's not heavy on one side or anything like that, it's right up the center. Now, when it comes to these gasification stoves, this one is a little bit bigger than average, but don't get me wrong, there are bigger versions out there. This is good for one, two, three, four people. Definitely not huge groups by any means, but definitely suitable for one to three, four people. It is very efficient. It will burn all of the wood down to ash. As you can see here, it does burn very quickly too. This is definitely not one of those stoves where you can feed it and walk off. It's one of those stoves that you have to stay with it and feed the beast. I've used that reference before, and that's because essentially that's what you're doing. You are feeding this stove. It actually looks like our water is done. It's ready to boil, and yes, it is boiling. Now you may be wondering how much time did that take, and the truth is the answer doesn't matter all that much because every single situation, every scenario where you go to use this is going to be different. There's so many factors involved. How dry is your material? Is there wind? I mean, so on and so forth. Every single condition, every single situation, this thing is going to perform differently. Because of the larger size of the stove, it is easier to simmer your food if you need to do so. Most of the time with these gasification stoves, it's either all go or no go. This one you have a little bit of balance because it is larger. Of course, it will take more work from you to make that happen because of the nature of the stove itself. So let's say that you're considering purchasing one of these stoves. Let's go over the pros and cons for you real quick. Let's wrap this up. First off, it's very easy to set up. It's not a mystery how it all goes together. It makes sense. You do this once, twice, you'll figure it out. You know, the thing with many of these stoves is they're really complicated. Sometimes they simply do not make sense and you have to always go back to the instructions unless you use it lots and lots of times. You're like, hey, how does this thing go together? It just doesn't make any sense. This one's pretty straightforward. It's very stable. The quality, again, for the money, is excellent. When it comes to speed of use, this one is typical. It takes about three minutes for the gasification process to start with dry materials. If yours are damp or wet, it can take longer. You can easily get 16 ounces of water to boil in less than 10 minutes with this stove. Again, your mileage will vary greatly. This stove is wind resistant, not windproof. If you're all about speed, you will need a windscreen. There's no doubt about that. While you do not see any flames coming off of this, this thing will continue to burn for over 20 minutes and it will be extremely hot. And that goes back to the simmer ability of this stove. With the proper attention and care, you can simmer with this. When it comes to the supports, the legs are a little bit stiff, but nothing to complain about. At least they're not loose. There's been no flexing with extreme heat, no issues at all. The mesh bag is of a good quality. When it comes to complaints, well, first off, stainless steel, it's heavier. It also traps in and holds heat longer. So this thing will be hot for a long period of time, 
even once you get rid of all of the embers and so on. When you're firing this thing up, it will smoke some. Your hands will get dirty. You would be surprised at how many people complain about these wood stoves getting their hands dirty. And folks, that really is just a nature of a wood burning stove. It's gonna get sooty, there's gonna be ash involved, your hands will get dirty, plain and simple. An aspect that you do have to keep in mind when it comes to a stove like this is time. Time and attention. It takes both of those to make these stoves work. You don't just light this and walk away. You basically light it and you take care of it until you're done cooking. That's how it goes. Something else to consider with stoves like this is that they may be banned in certain areas, certain parks where you can't have open fires and so on. So make sure to check with the local laws before you head out with one of these. Is your pot going to get dirty from using this? Yes. Is that a con? No. Is that something that people complain about? Yes. Should you complain about it? No. When it comes to the Canway stove, there's not much to complain about, especially for the $20 price tag. These gasification stoves can be rather expensive. This one's not. 20 bucks is a hard price to beat. And it really does show you what you can buy for the money when you compare it to what else is out on the market, which can easily cost you 60, 70, and up dollars. Overall, I really do like the design of this. It's well thought out. Of course, this is not a unique design by any means. There are other companies who have variants of this or even flat out exact copies of this. To the viewer who sent this in, thank you very much for doing so. If you guys are familiar with this stove, you have some hands-on experience, comment down below. Go ahead and comment down below right now and share your thoughts about this inexpensive wood stove. Do you guys like this? Do you hate it? What would you change on it? Is one pound eight ounces too much for a wood stove to carry? Comment down below. Make sure to hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. It does help out, trust me. Subscribe if you want to. Until next time, everyone, strength and honor. I will see you guys around. Bye.